Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Please excuse my voice. Um, I haven't been too well past few days. Got a bit of a head head cold and a and a cough, which coincides with me getting five days off work. So yeah, a little bit annoying. Haven't been able to go out nursing a bit of a head cold, but um, I'll I'll persist and do my best. Um, I wanted to uh, just compare the Railblazer rod holders, which are which you see really common and popular in Australia. Um, to the yak attack ones now i've got my preference now you guys just decide um at the end which one you think is better or not i'll show you the features and a few things i like and and dislike about them um but um yeah i'll, I'll test it out on this uh on the on the uh, rails of the uh, hobie outback that i've got here so i'll, I'll do the railblazer one first now as you know, th there's a few ways that uh, the roll blazer uh, rod holders will, will attach on your kayak. So I, you do see a lot of this type here, which again um, overhangs quite a bit from the side of the kayak. You've got this type here, um, which you can get these holes drilled out. You drill them out and you can get some hardware that'll fix that. Again, they're quite a big footprint. Um, I know previously I'd been using these as well which just screw on um, quite easy um, there like like so All right, and to put these on um, you've got the locking mechanisms there same same with this one here I'll just get rid of that one and and same with that lock on and off so that'll sit in there we're trying to do this one-handed lock it and then it's uh, fixed in there. Now you've got your, your leash uh, attachment there, your hole for your leash holder. Now you can lock your rods into this one. So let's grab a rod. All right, so just got a normal spin rod here. Now you see it's got that little tiny cut out there. So that can sit like that. But I mean, nothing's stopping it. It, it coming out that way it's not going to go left or right nothing stopping it coming out to lock this rod you're going to spring that over and then that'll that'll lock over so you need to bring your reel up so now that's locked and, and not going anywhere same thing can happen with um, your bait caster straight in there lock it over not going anywhere otherwise I mean it can just sat in there I mean but see how far down it's going pretty far down now to always move that say if I want to move that around different position I actually got to physically take that out spin it around and relock it this one here I was finding put that in lock it you get hold of something decent and it just moves around even if you uh, tighten that up now that's pretty tight and and the uh, leverage on it that can still you can still move it so I wasn't real happy with that at all so now I'm going to compare the um, yak attack one the yak attack rod holder so I finally got this is what I was waiting for this took a whole month to come from the States two weeks alone just over two weeks from Sydney um, so they're the rail adapters to go on the PA14 rail to be able to use, use them. So what I'm going to do now, get rid of this. Now you'll see the difference between the Yak Attack one. Now the base, straight away you can, you can see the difference of the base. They've got these little uh, you know, cutouts, uh, nodules here. So straight away, you can see that's going to go in the rail and that's going to straight away prevent it from twisting, right? So how this one here, the rail blazer one has nothing on the bottom. You had the cutouts, which goes in the, in the groove. Put the uh, yak attack one on, flick the switch, right? Not going anywhere. Now, if I wanted to move that, I don't have to pull it out I just push that in and I can swivel that straight away and it's even not going anywhere right locks in not going anywhere push again 
I want to change the angle, right, heaps, heaps easier, heaps better. Um, now to lock it, lock it in, now already you can see the difference as well with the cutout, how big that cutout is here compared to the, uh, the roll blazer one, that little, little tiny thing there. So even if I'm getting a uh, spin rod, putting that in, just all the way in, so heaps more support already. Right, but say I want to lock it in, even just a flick of the wrist, bang, it's locked. Not going anywhere. Unlock it, bang, straight out. Same as a um, bait caster. And let's say, for instance, I don't want to lock it all, lock it, I just want to have it in there. You can just put it, put it like that. But a bait caster as well. Straight in, down much easier to lock just one one flick and it's done so i don't know i prefer these primarily th this locking locking uh, bit here i find i don't have to really tether anything i put a rod in there i just go like that i just flick it open it just go like that want to change the angle push the button and it's changing the angle straight away without having to unclip pull it out and reposition it um and, and the fact that it will not twist in there and that the real estate it's taking up is so much smaller than like a roll blazer one. So anyway, that's my two cents worth. Um, you know, you make your own decision, but after using both, for me, I love uh, these Yak Attack rod holders. Heaps better. Anyway, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, I was going to do another uh, a video soon. I've had a couple of requests about the motor for the... Uh, PA14. Also, I worked out a way to put a um, the outrigger kit on a PA, which will be same for PA12s and PA14s without drilling any holes. So I'll uh, give my throat, give my voice a bit of a rest, and um, I'll do that one shortly. Thanks for watching, guys.